Greetings, our dear viewers. Uh, today we are live at Minaka, and I'm teacher Peter Okware on a new program called Career Foundation. And in the Career Foundation, today we are privileged to host one of the most renowned uh, educationalists in Uganda and in Kampala. I don't have the audacity to introduce her. She will introduce herself. Thank you very much. I'm Narongo Kawenja. I'm the director of Minaka Kindergarten and Primary School, former chairperson of private schools, Makindye Division, Kampala District. Thank you very much. To start with, uh, there is a, like people don't want to, to ask in most cases, but it's very important. The reason why we are here having an interview with her, it's also in, uh, to find out how old is she, because, and how many years has she spent in education. That will give us a clear understanding before we dive into the topic of, of uh, the topical discussion. How old are you, Mami? Um, I'm 68 years, and I started teaching in 1974. Wow, meaning you have been teaching for the past 1974, 48. So members, uh, we are with Madam Kawenja Nalongo, and she has been teaching since 1974. Now we are going to go into education itself and that's a main ma major objective why we are here today we would like this generation to tap into your experience because they are saying that experience is the best teacher now according to you based on how you are seeing education in uganda and in africa compare it to your education and this education and be very sincere is it taking us anywhere in terms of development or we are just going backwards because you have a clear picture that I might not have, the way how you used to study, the objective that we are looking at, how a child would be by P7, and compare it to this current state with our competition, uh, so many schools sprouting here and there, the media doing this and that. So are the objectives of education still in place, or we are in our own education, or they have improved? So compare your years and this time, and also your advice. As far as education is concerned these days, I don't know how I can term it. Because tomorrow, every day we are having different posts. We are having different uh, books. We are, these days we are following the books, but we are not following what was taught in the, in the college. You find a teacher, he, instead of using the, even her knowledge, she looks into the what? Into the books. Because there are so many... The, uh, uh, education has turned into business, whereby somebody can write the whole book and do this and that. When these teachers get the books, they don't know. I ever tell them that what man has done, man can do. And that when we are de de dealing with teaching, it needs teamwork. Because we are taught in different uh, colleges. If you are from Chibuli, Chibuli PTC, the other one from Kabula Soka, from where, you sit together and liars. And liars, but others, even if you find them, the way they prepare the lesson, the way they do this, someone's finding a certain book and following it as if it is a syllabus. Forgetting that, that book was written to help, to guide. Because these days the children are having much work than we had during our years. And these days the parents are very much interested in the books other than the practical work. Even if the, the government is encouraging us to make us uh, let the children do practicals, do these crafts and whatever. Whenever I did one day, we made the crafts from the beads, and I put the bead on my arm. One found him and told me, hey, you are putting the, the, the bead, whatever, on your hand. When you are Muganda, the beads, are, we don't put it on the what? On the hands. Then I said, yes, it was true, but we are just promoting skills. So on this note, I'm not saying that the government has not, has not done its work. It has done its work. But as much as we are doing crafts here in Uganda, let them be taken away from Uganda for importation so that they can see that we are having skills here. You know, when you are selling these small bags of beads and whatever, these people in our country cannot buy it. They want those from where? 
from outside. On this note, I'm arguing to the government, if at all schools, because yesterday I saw those of Kabasanda, they had made so many good bags and things of that kind, let them be exported so that when they export, they bring other things and we continue exchanging knowledge. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I'm also building on that. According to you, compare like the way how we are teaching today with the way how you are taught. Because you have talked about it just briefly. Is it the same way how, let me say, before, uh, I don't know at what time you people could go to school. I don't know at what time you would leave school. Compare it with today's uh, so many schools, which at times it might be beyond schools due to competition. Is it the same way whereby uh, the way how people were taught before, how you learned is the same way how the children are learning? Thank you very much. During, during those years, or our years, there was what we call regionalism. When, uh, 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 Islam to Islam, as we say. Whenever, when you were Muslim, you, how, even if you are living here in Chibuye, and the school was as far as Natete, you had to walk as far as Natete. When you were here, and the, the, the Church of Uganda school was as far as uh, Muyenga, you had to walk. So that you, 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 the, the religion had to be brought together and to be brought up as a religious leader. But we couldn't make it. And that's these days, the schools, we are looking for the competence. How well is the school doing? And two, the, the parents are interested in English. You find a parent who does not speak English, but he says, I'm taking my child because there they speak what? English. Forgetting that, that, is, that language is not ours, but we have to learn from our knowledge, then we get that one. But they say, even at home, you find uh, the mother speaking English to the uh, younger baby. Eh? Even the baby say, you come, you sit. Instead of teaching them our language. Let's love our, our language and let's love our tribes. We shall be very good citizens. And to speak your own language does not mean that you don't know English. English is known and English is a lesson whereby it has its time and it has to be taught. And even if at home, the parent might say that I'm teaching my child, but you cannot finish up the syllabus. So the syllabus is well arranged, but the parents, they are saying that they, 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 they prioritize English as if and yet this here in Uganda we are now perturbed. We are now mixed. The Congolese are here. The so many Sudanese. the Sudanese, the whatever, they are all here. But you find them speaking their own languages on the, on the way. Once they enter, we have to make them that they have to love our Uganda as they came into our Uganda. When they are here in Uganda, let them learn Uganda. We add there the sounds, we add there the phonic language, then we shall succeed. And they, they will continue coming here. We don't know why they are coming here, but I'm sure because of the, or because of our education and because of the, Steady teachers we are having. Thank you very much. Mami, uh, she has told us that uh, English is a language, but at least we should uh, do a lot in, in order to reserve our culture. And culture starts from the language. That's the mother language, the L1. So it is our collective responsibility to see that we prioritize our L1, the local languages. Uh, as a child at home, that is called more of identity. Eh? So if a child loses identity, it simply means that they have lost it from an early age. So uh, English can never be our first language. So each child should all... Mm. And also, I don't know, actually, we are perturbed. And our, I don't know how the teachers are feeling. Some time ago, the, the ministry said it is the, we are going to, to start t teaching Swahili. Hey, we are teaching Swahili. We are having English. What about our own languages? They were not advocated for and they were not touched on. So on this note, I'm requesting those who, have you, who are looking at me, when you are from Uganda, prioritize your language because you will never become English. Even if you go there, you see these people who are going to Cheyo. When they reach there, 
even when they are co communicating to their parents, they say, ah, I'm here, as I saw someone who is feeding the, the, the younger dogs on the media. So we should prioritize and we should learn our, we should love our language and our country. Thank you very much. I said, Madam, I said that at least we should love our language and uh, country through prioritizing our languages. So now, according to your earlier years of education, uh, the teachers, like where the teachers, like today's teachers, whereby today so many teachers are working on, under a lot of pressure. Where did you have like that pressure when you are still a student? Did your teachers have that pressure? When you became a teacher, did you have that pressure compared to those years and these years? Actually, but not at all. Because we had our timetable and we could do it as it would come. When it was art and craft, we could draw, we could model, we could do, we could do things of that kind. We are not examination, we were not examination oriented. But these days, the parents are good what results. The ministry is good what results. What have they done? Forgetting that, you can fail to, to know mathematics, but you can know how to read. And you can be somebody from so many sectors. But others think that once you don't get the first grade, you are not being taught. Yet, the brain is different on this note. I'm requesting everyone to respect the girl child and the girl child to get a good citizen my women or girls must be well located for and they should be prioritized in teaching in learning and teaching yes i believe you have heard from her that at least for them they didn't have that competition that we are having today and teachers had a lot of time and at the end of the day that's what made them and even she has also told us to prioritize the girl child simply because they are the, the pillars of any successful nation. Because the 80% of the child is from the mother. And that's why these Bagandas say that Bwanyina, uh, whatever. That whenever the child gets 20, 20, in the paper and he gets 20 marks, that is the father's marks. There is no marks for the father, for the mother. Wow, wow, wow. When the child gets 20 marks, <laughs> When, she, when the child gets more than that, that means the 20 for the father is there, then the difference there is for the, for the mother. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Now, remember that Alicia are going to ask her. Before we go, we, we have a number of questions that we at least are going to ask our mommy uh, so that she can give us an insight. Uh, kindly, in one minute, take, tell us more about career development. Do schools these days... Uh, invest a lot in career development. Do children know that about their careers? Oh, there is a lot that we have to do in order, at least, for us to go back on the drawing board and then define careers in the right way. Actually, environment is a is a key. Where do you live? What language do you use? You find the children who are living where they put on mini skirts. Do you think that when the child sees so many putting on many mini skirts, they should we put each on the thing of this kind? No. We have to guide the children. We have to educate them. We have to, to, to whatever they have to do, they sh should be with examples. Mothers are no longer cooking. They are having what we call the house girls, or what they call them namusi. If the mother cannot cook, can you expect the child to cook? And some mothers are funny. They don't want their children even to wash the plates, even to, to mop the house, even to, to, to even it, when they go back, they simply tell the girl to let them, you let the child wash, you sit there, give her drinks, things of that kind. We should go down and bring up children as a child who is go, as a responsible, to be a responsible citizen in the future. Thank you very much. Mommy has told us that at least we should do a lot to raise up our children as responsible citizens from an early age, which is very important. Now, according to you again, uh, with a, that, is a, that has been on Career Foundation. Now, do parents, do most parents understand, or do most parents, I know all those ones who are watching us, do they know what qualifies a school to be called a good school? That this is a good school, this is not a good school, or they consider other factors? Actually, the parents, these days, they look at smartness. When the children are smart, ah, that is very what? 
that is a very good school. When they say schools with, with vannies, <laughs> that school is very what? Very, very good. They, I saw, the, actually, in the, I saw, I visited some, I, I visited some schools. I saw a van. Then I said, let me fire up this van where it is going. Uh, when I followed it, it was going into a, a wetland. Then I asked the teacher, by the way, how do you look after these children this, when this thing is, uh, when this, the children can drown within this area? Uh, uh, you look at the, the compound here, there, it is conducive because they had put their things and the children can, where they are looking is okay, but behind and whatever where can they can move is not good. Parents these days, they don't have a choice. The parents here, they, when, when they are sitting with somebody, where does your child go? In a very big school, paying a very a big amount. They think that the bigger the amount, the better the school. Forgetting that, even when you come to this mina of ours, that the money is not whatever, but what do we want? That we make it, and our, our motto is to educate a responsible citizen. Indeed, they are responsible. And for us, what do we do? Because at home, those days, we could wake up in the morning and dig. And dig, even we could fetch water in the morning. But these children in these areas, they don't fetch water. Why don't they come early in at school? Let the, and the teachers are, are, are living near. Let them come early. And we are having some extra activities that make the children to come early. Because when, it, when we are preparing for, we are having, when we are having, having the speech day, we have to prepare. And that, that, that the, the curriculum has to stay, and our timetable has to, to stay. We have to create an extra time, and so that the children can go back in a time and not exceeding of how, what time they should reach their homes. What makes a good school? Don't move your child from school to school, because you don't know. You don't know. Eh? Every school can teach. But what do you do? What do you have to do as a parent? Cooperate. Now, as we wrap it up, uh, we'd like our mommy to give us some piece of advice and guidance. Yes, it can be advice, it can be guidance. According to you, what is that piece of advice that you could give to the young generation who are watching us in schools and outside school? How can they also, how can they also live like you? Because being at this age, being this energetic, not something small. It is big. Um, why am I looking like this? For me, during our years with my father, she was a, a farmer. We could dig, we could do everything. We could go for firewood, we could do it for everything. Every, we are hard working. We could pick coffee, we could put it in the outside we could get it out we could do things of the every day we are working like horses but these days parents say ah, my child cannot do that as if they are having angels i'm requesting parents let the children do everything has its time everything has its time as much as you are having a cross you have to when the small the cross is small you cannot say that you want it long sleeved. You cut the fashion according to the stone, the according to the according to the cross. And I'm requesting it, parents, don't say that. Okay, well, if the neighbor's child is going in such a, a school, mine also has to go there. Members, every school teaches. What do we need? Cooperation. What do we need? Abide with what is they need from there. Do, do that, is the child ever there? Is that have you given there the school requirements? Uh, do you visit the school? Do you know the child is performance? Do you accept that she cannot be the first, but she is at school and she has to learn what is there? And we should know that the other children cannot be, cannot get a first grade, and they will never all be uh, science teachers. No, because when, if I told they are all science teachers, with the teachers will, will the primary teachers will not be there. Even the other people would not be there. And even when we are talking with our children, what's the improve our language? Because these children are having, we have so many things to do. They will be market sellers, they will be working in whatever, but the language will lead them to be good citizens and achieve whenever they are. And they, and they should not respect. 
Let them respect the teachers, respect the neighbors, respect the elders, respect the lay leaders. They will be very good citizens and they will achieve what they want. And it does not mean that uh, everybody has to go to Makerere, has to go to where. No. Whenever you pass, you succeed. So long as you are prompt and when you are knowing that a hundred shillings is money. Now our final question as we go would be, uh, is education success? We always ask that question. According to you, is education, only education, is it success or? Indeed it is success. Why? Education makes a man a better man than she would have been without it. Thank you for what she has said. Education is success because it makes a, a man a better man, and without it, the man or woman they wouldn't have been better. An educated person, putting on uh, 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 whatever these skirts of this kind and walking as if it is mad, finding the, uh, an educated person, getting the kawalaj and drinking when walking, uh, you, 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 you expect something wrong on her head or his head. Have you heard that? <laughs> if you find an educated person doing contrary to the education, it simply means that there is something wrong in his mind or her mind. So thank you very much, our dear viewers. Uh, today we have been at Minaka and Kindergarten and, and Primary School in Machi, India. And we would like to send our sincere gratitude to the school management, to the director, the head teacher. Uh, we are very grateful, as you can see. And any parent, when, if you like to take your child to a school, that will give your child quality education. Kindly think of Minaka Kindergarten because there is quality education here. And uh, this is a school which is managed by a person who is in education and she has, she, she's passionate about what she does. It doesn't mean that other schools wouldn't like parents to take their kids there. They can also take the kids there because there are so many children that need education. Hope you have learned something. At least a parting shot would be one. If you'd also like to be hosted on Teachers TV Africa, feel free to contact us on our numbers below. Send us an email. We shall get in touch with, we shall get back to you. And at the end of the day, as she said, we shouldn't turn education into a business. And thank you for watching Teachers TV Africa. Thank you for subscribing. See you then.